Hi, I'm Prof L and welcome to Chemistry Matters. Today we're going to be talking about solution stoichiometry. There are a number of videos that uh, we've done on stoichiometry and one of the take home messages that I'd like you to consider today is uh, although stoichiometry often looks really, really daunting, in fact, for 99% of the stoichiometry problems, you only need to use two equations. The first of those equations is the one that relates molar mass to mass and amount. The second of those equations is the one that relates concentration to amount and volume. And so today we're going to be concentrating on the latter equation because this equation is one that you use in solution when you're talking about the concentration of solutions. So C concentration is equal to N amount divided by volume. Again, in my <clears throat> rather too many years of uh, teaching chemistry, I have seen this equation mangled and uh, written in every wrong possible way. You remember the right way around through remembering the unit of concentration. The unit of concentration is the mole per litre. Mole divided by litre. So to get this equation around the right way, we need whatever it is we measure in mole, or whatever it is we have has the units of mole, which is amount, and we divide that by whatever it is that has the unit of litre, which is volume. C is equal to N over V, mole per litre. So let's go ahead and have a look at uh, a few examples of using this equation in stoichiometric problems. So the first one that we're going to look at is uh, we're going to make up a solution of glucose. We're going to take five grams of glucose and glucose has the chemical formula C6H12O6. And we are going to take our solid glucose, we're going to put it in water, we're going to dissolve it, and we are going to have the final volume of our solution being 750 millilitres. The question then becomes, right, what is the concentration of your solution once you have done this? How do we go about solving this problem? Again, as in all of the stoichiometric problems that we've looked at, you look and see what data you've been given, and you figure out basically which of these two equations, or both, you're going to be using to solve the problem. Because again, as I said at the start, as I stressed at the start, in fact, every stoichiometric problem pretty much uses either one or both of these equations. So there's only two equations that you've got to know or remember in order to do stoichiometry. That makes life an awful lot easier. So. What have we got? We've been given some data, we've been given a mass, we've been given a chemical formula, and we've been given a volume. And the question then is, what's the concentration? So this should be fairly straightforward, shouldn't it? We should just say, right, we're asked for a concentration, so therefore we've got to be using this equation, because this is the only one of these two equations that contains concentration. So we simply get the number of moles, divide it by the volume, and we're done. But <laughs> we're not given the number of moles, are we? We're given a mass and we're given a chemical formula. And so that means that chances are, in order to solve this problem, we're going to have to use this equation and this equation. And absolutely we are, okay? So we have got a mass. And as we've said in other videos, if you've got a mass and you've got a chemical formula, you can always get N the number of moles. So that's going to be our first step. Let's get the number of moles of glucose that we're going to be using here. So the number of moles from this equation is the mass divided by the molar mass, and that is equal to 5.00 grams over the molar mass of glucose, C6H12O6, so that's going to be 6 times 12.01 plus 12 times 1.008 plus 6 times 16.00 grams per mole. We get all of those numbers, remember, from the periodic table. 
and we do our calculation and we find that that is 2.77 times 10 to the minus 2 mole of glucose. So, um, has that made our life any easier? Yes, it has, because now what have we got? We've got an amount or a number of moles of glucose. We've got a volume. We can get a concentration. So therefore, it's now just a matter of plugging this and this into this equation and see what we get. So C is equal to N over V, which is equal to 2.77 times 10 to the minus 2 mole over, aha, here's a trap, 750 milliliters. We have given the data in milliliters here. Now, what do we know about doing calculations? We always need to do calculations in SI units. What is the SI unit of volume? It is not the milliliter, certainly. <laughs> and in actual fact, if I'm going to be brutally honest, it's not actually the liter either, but we always talk of concentrations in terms of moles per liter. So we need to convert 750 milliliters into liters, and 750 milliliters is equal to 0 0.750 liters, and so when you do that calculation, you end up with 3.69 times 10 to the minus 2 mole per litre. And yeah, that's a fairly typical um, stoichiometric calculation when you're trying to find the concentration of a solution that you're making up in the laboratory. And generally, you're making up a solution by weighing out a particular mass of a material. And as soon as you do that, that means you're going to have to use both equations to figure out your concentration. You need this one to calculate N, and you need this one then to calculate C once you've got your N from over here. Okay, let's then have a look at another example. And in this case, we are going to take 7.00 grams of sodium chloride in water. And then the final volume of this solution is going to be 625 mil. Calculate your concentration of sodium chloride, the sodium chloride solution. So what do we do? Well, again, this is um, very, very similar to the previous question. We need our molar mass of sodium chloride, and we calculate the number of moles of sodium chloride. There's our volume. We get our concentration from that, OK? So therefore, the uh, number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass, which is 7.00 grams, over the molar mass of sodium chloride, which is 22.99 uh, plus 35.45 grams per mole. And that then equals uh, in terms of moles, that's 0 0.120 mole. And so therefore, we now have our amount of sodium chloride, our number of moles. We have our volume, so therefore, concentration is N over V, which is equal to 0 0.120 mole over, again, we are in milliliters here. We don't want to be in milliliters. We want to be in liters. 0.625 liters, and then that gives us 0.192 mole per liter. Now, um, I've done two very, very similar problems uh, in a row, and you might be asking why. They're similar, but they're not exactly the same. In the first problem, we asked for the concentration of glucose, okay, the concentration of a glucose solution. Now, glucose is a molecule, C6H12O6. You put uh, solid glucose in water and it remains as glucose molecules. Now that is fundamentally different from what happens with sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is an ionic solid, or it's an electrolyte if you want to call it that. And that means that as soon as you put it in water, it dissociates. So in other words, there's no such thing as sodium chloride molecules. 
As soon as you put sodium chloride in water, it turns into sodium ions, Na+, and chloride ions, Cl-. So when we're doing our calculations and we come up with this number here, 0.192 mole per litre, what this essentially means is that the concentration of sodium ions in the solution is 0.192 mole per litre. And the concentration of chloride ions in this solution is 0.192 mole per litre. So, yeah, when we say we've got a 0.192 mole per litre solution of sodium chloride, that's what we mean. We, we're talking about the sodium ions and the chloride ions, the concentrations of them, not of sodium chloride molecules per se. So let's maybe illustrate this with another example where we're looking at an ionic solid, which is a little bit different to uh, sodium chloride. This is aluminium sulfate. So this has the chemical formula Al2SO43. Now let's take solid aluminium sulfate and let's dissolve it in water. And what happens is that that then turns into two aluminium three plus ions, aqueous ions, and three sulfate ions, aqueous ions. Okay. Now let's do our calculation. So let's take 3.00 grams of aluminium sulfate and we are going to uh, put this into water, dissolve it up so that we've got a final volume of 250 mil. And then what's the concentration of the solution? Okay. So we do it again the same way that we've done the other two examples. So therefore, first thing we do is the number of moles is equal to the mass over the molar mass. So the mass, 3.00 grams divided by the molar mass. And so that is 2 times 26.98 plus uh, 3 times 32.06 plus 3 fours are 12 times 16 grams per mole. And that then hopefully comes out as uh, 8.77 times 10 to the minus 3 mole of aluminium sulfate. Okay, so that's what 3 grams then corresponds to. Um, so, that's our amount, that's our number of moles. Here is our volume, C is equal to N over V, is 8.77 times 10 to the minus 3 mole over 0 0.250 litres, and that then gives you uh, 3.51 times 10 to the minus 2 mole per litre. That's our solution of aluminium sulfate. We're saying that it has a concentration of 3.51 times 10 to the minus 2 mole per litre. But what about the concentration of aluminium ions and the concentration of sulfate ions? That's kind of what's important in this solution. And the concentration of aluminium ions is not 3.51 by 10 to the minus 2. And the concentration of sulfate ions is not 3.51 by 10 to the minus 2. Can you see why? Well, it comes from our balanced chemical equation up here, doesn't it? One mole of this is going to dissolve to give you two moles of that and three moles of that. So therefore, the concentration of aluminium 3 plus is going to be equal to two times the concentration of aluminium sulfate. Two times 3.51 times 10 to the minus 2 mole per litre. And that is going to be equal to 7.02 times 10 to the minus 2 mole per litre. That's the concentration of Al3+. Okay, from the balanced chemical equation. And the concentration of sulfate ion, SO42 minus, is going to be three times the concentration that we've worked out. Three times 3.51 times 10 to the minus 2 mole per litre. And that 
is then going to be equal to uh, 0.105 mole per litre. Okay, so that is just something to be aware of when you're talking about solutions of ionic substances or things that you would call electrolytes. Anything that dissociates when you put it in water. And by dissociate, uh, that means breaking up essentially into its constituent ions. So the concentration that you calculate of aluminium sulfate is not the same as the concentration of aluminium ions or sulfate ions. So any salt that doesn't dissolve in a one-to-one -one ratio, you're gonna to have to worry about this sort of thing happening in your um, stoichiometric calculations, okay? So there you have it, I guess, in a nutshell. Um, those are some relatively straightforward solutions, stoichiometry calculations, and we'll see you next time.